This weapon might have witnessed more key moments of American history than any other. It's one of the swords worn by George Washington, founding father and commander-in-chief of the Continental Army through the Revolutionary War. It's not a weapon that he ever swung against an opponent, though he did direct troops with it during battle. For a gentleman at the time, a sword was often a fashion accessory, a marker of status and prestige. And as a military commander, the sword was a vital component of his uniform. George Washington owned many different swords throughout his life. During the Revolutionary War, he often carried a coteau. Its hilt featured a distinctive silver lion's head. It had been given to him as a gift in 1770 by a wealthy American merchant. In the years before the war, that made it an apt symbol. Washington was the champion of independent American commerce, and if necessary, he was prepared to use his fighting prowess to fight British taxation. But the blade that has the greatest significance must be the one that Washington used at the end of the war, when Great Britain signed for peace in the Treaty of Paris. George Washington was in a very powerful position. He had created the Continental Army, shaped it into a truly professional fighting force, and he was its undisputed commander. He could have reigned as a military dictator quite easily, but once the war was over, he ceremonially returned his sword to its scabbard and resigned his commission as commander-in-chief. He became simply a citizen again, a citizen who was then elected president. At the end of his life, Washington left his swords to his nephews. In the bequest, he included this passage. These swords are accompanied with an injunction not to unsheathe them for the purpose of shedding blood, except it be for self-defense or in defense of their country. 